Dzień dobry, witam Państwa bardzo serdecznie. Rozpoczynamy trzeci, ostatni dzień kongresu, drugiego kongresu tańca. To wydarzenie, które trwa już od... So, let us move on. We are in the last day of the event that started on the 26th of September. This, we are uh, at the Berlin uh, Museum of Polish Jews in Warsaw. And, and we have both the audience in the room, but also um, online participants. So, welcome everyone. Let us... Uh, um, begin a very important panel. We are going to talk about the future of the uh, Pol uh, the future of the Polish um, uh, critique, uh, uh, curating and promoting dance in Poland. I would like to give the floor to the moderator Jagoda Ignaczak, um, a critic, a researcher, a lecturer at many different universities, also at the Frederick Chopin Musical uh, University. Um, thank you very much. As uh, Professor Wojciechowska once said, uh, uh, cr uh, cr critics dance their internal impulse. Um, so this is our internal pulse uh, that we are going uh, to use. And today we're going to have a meeting with the art of dance. Um, criticism is, um, uh, is a service function uh, to the work of art. We are in the beginning of this uh, path, or well, here we see we have yet another panelist has just joined us. So we are right in the beginning of uh, this path when we start describing, um, reviewing, promoting um, a work of art. Uh, sometimes it is important from the point of view of raising funds as well. And um, this is the post factum situation when the work of art is uh, already there. It needs to be described, it needs to be classified, it needs to be codified and classified. And uh, we are in a difficult situation because we need to use certain tools and um, they are not always welcome by people of art when we are naming what they have done and that is the product of their mind and soul and heart but we still have to name things and this is the simplest function the simplest function of a criticism is um, giving information and documenting and without information and documenting we would not have we would not stand any chance for having any events um, that would uh, then become a part of uh, the history of art, description of art, or uh, the uh, comprehensive um, reflection on the academic level. So on this path, that is, um, is um, experienced by this distinguished group of people and distinguished from the, because uh, they do have um, a lot of achievements in their respective fields. So we are going to be accompanied by people who represent those areas that we are going to talk about. And we're going to talk about research, criticism, and curating. And these people are highly experienced in all three domains. They're both practitioners and the theoreticians. And they have a certain or rather the uh, type of understanding perception that will help us to understand the true role of researcher, critic, curator, reviewer, and uh, also a person who manages space for dance, which is who is a curator. So the group of um, panelists today are Professor Magosata Leiko, Professor on uh, Theatrology and um, Cultural Sciences, Head of the Faculty of Theatre and Drama at the Wuch Theatre. And she is uh, um, also implementing the National Programme on the Development of Humanism, the Dictionary of Dance of the 20th and 21st century. The next person is Ursula Loba Wilgotska, pedagogue, lecturer, of the analysis and uh, uh, notation of movement by, uh, by Knust method, works at the Poznan University and the deputy chair of the Polish Chorological uh, Forum. And Ursula, uh, for many years, has been an editor at the Chorolog Chorologica Journal. Uh, Hanna Raszewska, course critic, freelancer, 
until recently an academic teacher, a leader of the Warsaw um, um, Lance Laboratory, Dr. Joanna Szymajda, a manager and researcher of dance in the period 2007 to 2010, was coordinating a festival, Body and Mind, in the period 2010-2017, the deputy director of the Institute of Music and Dance, in the period 2018-2020, the head of the ballet section at the Wrocław Opera House, and also cooperates with the Theatre Academy and Łódź University. Monika Myśliwiec, choreographer, pedagogue, um, uh, uh, di uh, a director of the Krakow-based uh, uh, private uh, dance school, the head of the dance um, and ballet section at the ZASP Association, and um, uh, Dr. Agata Siwek, um, the, the head of interdisciplinary uh, curatorship uh, uh, programs, um, curator, also cooperates with the Adam Mickiewicz University. Prywatnie powiem państwu, że and uh, privately I would say that um, with um, I do cooperate with these ladies uh, because I was either their student or their teacher. So some of the ladies were teaching me, I then was teaching some of those ladies. And uh, so as a milieu, we meet in different spaces and it shows that in fact it is, a pos there, it is possible to consolidate around important subjects and uh, uh, some competencies are not obvious. And this is what we would like to talk about today. Now I would like to give the floor to Malgorzata Leiko so that she could uh, give us some information on the academic research. And we still have the postulates to show. Ah, the postulates are not on the screen. Yes, sorry. Yes, there we go with the postulates. So just let us mention who were the members of the working group. The working group consisted of the ladies present on the stage. There were three of us, Anna, Kulica, Jadwiga Majewska and me. And uh, the postulates that we developed as uh, we had many meetings on Zoom, actually. So those are the areas that refer to all three domains. And it could not be um, any way different than this. And um, sorry, I, just like Carol yesterday, um, a bit confused with the pieces of paper, but I don't have so many pieces of paper. Carl yesterday, he had a plethora of uh, paper on his lap and it took him some time to find the paper he needed. Likewise, me this morning, but luckily I don't have as much paper. There we go. So, ladies and gentlemen, the first postulate to dehermitize the language of dance. The second one, to establish the trade union for about people who write about dance. I apologize, a glitch, a technical glitch. Okay, let's just, uh, we apologize for this glitch. It will be fine in a minute. Soon we will see the postulates because we have to simply to show the beginning uh, slides for the session. Sorry, I apologize for this technical glitch, but we need to see the postulates on the screen. Because you've got to start reading the postulates and we need them on the screen. Please, could you please uh, show the postulates on the screen? The Institute of Music and Dance should have a program of training of dance critics as a dedicated program for dance critics, uh, uh, developing professional uh, critic workshops for critic workshops for critics, introducing theory and dance uh, critic as well as uh, choreology at universities, um, also um, creating jobs uh, for people who write about dance, creating a regular and professional uh, dance-related magazine, promoting uh, da other dance uh, publications, cooperation um, with the publishers of books about dance, also developing knowledge on the role of curator, 
and in, um, in improving uh, the prestige and image of critic, curator and dance researcher. I'm not sure if we will be capable of discussing all of these postulates and uh, the previous days show that um, it is, would be difficult to, to fit in with all these postulates within an hour. And uh, all of these um, points, uh, bullet points, uh, uh, those are the activities that merely budding uh, right now. And uh, I hope that today we will be quite uh, clear on some of those postulates. And we hope that um, eventually we would take some specific decisions and implement them. So, Magoja Taleiko, Madam Professor, my mentor, my master. And um, I was studying at the Witch University, and uh, she was also promoting my uh, MA work. Uh, and uh, Madame Professor is one of the few dance researchers who has uh, been uh, writing a lot uh, about dance and um, hence her presence. And I hope that what she's going to say about research in scientific research in the field of dance will be an optimistic message. I hope I would love to sound optimistic, although, in fact, the condition of um, dance research is um, such that this is merely the beginning of any research. Only now we see a new upcoming generation of researchers but we do not yet have majors at universities that would uh, prepare people to work with dance research. It's quite difficult. Uh, we know that such major uh, should somehow juxtapose uh, practical elements and a good researcher should uh, somehow, through his or her body, filter um, the, um, the subject of his or her thought. So this, in fact, should be interdisciplinary cause of studies that should be done in cooperation with other majors. Um, for instance, um, with the dance faculties at uh, musical academies, and it should also combine with um, other faculties at universities. Since the beginning of the 1980s, as I started traveling to Germany to take part there in conferences and uh, scholarships, I was envying the way German universities were training their dance researchers. And if today we would like to outline such a map of dance in Poland, then probably a very good feel for that would be the experience we have um, as we have been working on uh, the writing of the modern dance dictionary and this is a project that was uh, run on the basis of the grant given within the framework of the national program for the development of hu human studies um, the project started in 2015 and now the project has been concluded so editing and research activities have been finished and the book is there in the publishing house um, to be published. But as um, we were concluding that work, we finally uh, came up with a script for 600 pages and there we have 350 persons. So undoubtedly that is going to be quite an impressive publication for the Polish readers. But what is now important and what I would like to make a reference to is the team that was working on the dictionary. As we started our work, we created a team of 20 odd people and uh, 21 researchers within that. And if we look at their level of preparation for research, and if we uh, examine their academic path, it would be easy to say who actually runs dance research and what is the result of this research, which centers have been involved. 
most uh, frequently and what is the result of the research. So I just would like to say that a dance researcher uh, may deal with um, a critique, uh, but it does not always work con conversely. That is to say, a critic is not always a researcher. And if we look at um, the most recent uh, publications uh, from the previous decade, publications about dance, then we will see quite an impressive number of books. But within that, we see some information books, uh, documentation books, and very important translations of texts of uh, um, international researchers. But also, those are the results of the work of Polish dance researchers. And within the team of the 21 researchers who were working on the entries to the dictionary, there are graduates of many different uh, major city universities, uh, beginning uh, with uh, Polish um, uh, philology, with the specialization in uh, uh, theater sciences, also um, the specialists in culture, uh, musicology, philosophers, um, specialists in aesthetics, uh, Russian philology, um, anthrop uh, and also people specializing in the anthropology of culture. So this is more or less the array of majors, the graduates of which have undertaken dance research. Now, uh, talking about the centers, then uh, we have the people from uh, such universities as uh, the Krakow University. Um, many of the researchers graduated from the Jagiellonian University, or they continue their work at the Jagiellonian University. Uh, Poznan University, Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznan, and their faculty of uh, um, art history with um, uh, their uh, specialization on uh, theater and uh, uh, cultural research. In Gdańsk, we have only one researcher who is um, uh, doing intensive work on dance research and Warsaw. Uh, here we see most prominently Warsaw University. Uh, also the Frederick Chopin University of Music and also the Institute of Art uh, and its PhDs. Uh, now Lublin, this is another center where research on dance is being carried, uh, carried out and it's also worth mentioning uh, the University of Łódź And Jagoda is one of the graduates of this university, also Joasia Szymajda, uh, who has had a great um, academic career in this field. Also Tomek Cieszelski, who will soon be defending his uh, doctoral thesis. Also the Academy of Music in the Łódź. Uh, this is another centre uh, were such uh, researchers as uh, Juliusz Grzybowski and Mr. Ofczarek um, worked. And his contribution to the um, development of uh, our dictionary was very uh, useful. So this practical um, this uh, practical uh, facet uh, of uh, the studies of the research and the practical preparation of the researchers themselves is important, especially when they are to write about dance techniques. I would never myself write about uh, dance techniques because I'm sure that uh, Jacek Ovczarek is much more competent in this field. So, uh, Researchers uh, from various backgrounds uh, deal with dance and their uh, factual knowledge um, is very, has been uh, a great asset when we worked on the dictionary. And obviously a project like this um, couldn't be carried out uh, 
well, without um, any hurdles. Uh, one of the problems here was uh, the deadline and also the um, um, the number of uh, entries that we wanted to include. Now, I believe that uh, what is necessary is that we have such faculties uh, or, or subjects included uh, in uh, the existing faculties uh, that would prepare the future dance researchers. As I've said, it would be uh, best if this could be organized as interdisciplinary uh, and interuniversity uh, form of training and uh, according to uh, the act that we already have this is possible so hopefully uh, such um, um, such an interdisciplinary and interuniversity course uh, will be available in the future now uh, judging by their work, uh, we can uh, see what the researchers are truly interested in. And now, apart from uh, history uh, of, of the dance researchers, uh, there are few and far uh, between, usually there are uh, studies on contemporary dance and the newest uh, forms of dance, uh, the past two or three decades of dance. Researchers are also interested in the forms of dance that have only just uh, entered the, the Polish um, scene uh, and that uh, have only just become visible on the Polish scene. But there are also uh, very many blank pages that still haven't been, been filled. And, for example, uh, we should uh, study um, contemporary dance uh, under the communist uh, rule. I believe that it's worth uh, taking a closer look uh, at uh, how the uh, communist authorities treated dance. We generally know that uh, they were not very favorable of contemporary dance, but we could see what that was translated into. Now, the postulates that we have formulated uh, concerned recent uh, years and actually performances and, and stagings that, um, that have only uh, just entered the, uh, the scene. Maybe not all of you are aware of the fact uh, that uh, there are no um, bachelor's or master's degrees in uh, dance uh, studies, but there are postgraduate uh, studies available inter alia at the Frederick Chopin University of Music. Um, they used to uh, last for two years, and now um, there's just one year. However, the curriculum is the same. And uh, these studies are to prepare uh, those who write criticism of dance to their work. And when it comes to the uh, successes, I could, and, and the graduates, uh, I could uh, show them uh, to you here, uh, Hania Kursa, Ms. Jujvik, uh, Madam Director. Well, so, this is the role of uh, the studies that has been fulfilled. And they actually fulfill our expectations. So graduates of these studies, they actually uh, show this uh, rhythm of, of work uh, to the dance uh, community, which 
might uh, serve um, as a, a springboard uh, for further uh, research. Although, obviously, not every critic uh, has to be a researcher at the same time. Now, another issue. Now, we have some time constraints, so uh, if you could uh, give us um, a brief answer. Okay, question is to Maugosha. What should be included in the curriculum of such studies um, as the key topics? So, apart from dance history and dance theory, good methodological uh, preparation. So the theory of contemporary humanities, so not only theory of dance but also theory of humanities because they allow us to take uh, a broader view on dance and include dance in this cultural context and dehermitize it. And therefore, uh, I believe that second cycle studies are extremely important, uh, especially when it comes to uh, research methodology. Could I now ask uh, Urshula uh, Wilgotska, uh, who took up the legacy of Frederick Lange, uh, an outstanding dance historian and dance anthropologist, and, well, um, very many of us also were his students, so she took up his legacy and continues it. Um, and she also uh, con continues the Choreologica uh, studio. This is uh, a place where uh, new texts can be published, However, it has one drawback uh, when it comes to the uh, publication process. Um, it is quite long and therefore it cannot comment on uh, the events that are uh, there um, in real uh, time. But well, this is our uh, life. Uh, these are the times we live in. And the reviews, the commentaries, the, the stories that are done uh, post-factum uh, are not up to date. I'm not talking about essays uh, and I'm not talking about this um, strictly um, academic um, or, uh, or research uh, domain. What we miss is this uh, critique that we could read uh, right after a uh, performance and this is what the audience uh, misses. Could you tell us about this uh, Choreologica uh, studio? Thank you very much. I'd like to refer to what Madame Professor has said, who defined greatly what Choreology was, uh, uh, what it was involved in. Now, this need to create a university course of choreology isn't a new postulate. I believe that the first postulate was made in 1981, and as we talk about Professor Roderick Lange, well, that was the time when he came to Poland after a long break, and uh, he uh, wanted to create uh, su such a course. Uh, that was also uh, a suggestion of uh, the head of ethnological uh, studies at the uh, Poznan University, Mr. Bursta. But, well, in 1981 uh, the borders uh, became were closed again, and fortunately uh, this idea had to be abandoned. Um, since 1988, Professor uh, came uh, regularly uh, to uh, Poland 
to uh, develop here what he had developed abroad with great success. He became great authority in the field abroad. And uh, now I'm referring to what we were talking about during the first um, uh, panel when we talked about authorities. So Professor uh, was uh, our a great master and he changed our approach to dance, um, changed our uh, goals for the future and because it was impossible to create this course of choreology at university at that time, professor uh, came up with a private initiative and using his own funds he created the Institute of Choreology in Poznań and it is an institute that focuses on dance research in Poland. Now the institute opened in 1993 and um, is still um, active and it was uh, at this uh, institute that the Polish Forum of Choreology was established and it associates in an informal way a Polish choreologist. Uh, Madam Professor um, told us uh, who were um, the members of this uh, forum and what academic uh, background they represented. And it's actually wonderful that this background is very uh, diverse because uh, hence their contribution is very rich. So these are people who have um, a university education but also undertook uh, different workshops and training to become choreologists. Now the Polish Choreology Forum was established in 2009 and Initially, it was a small group of 10 people. Currently, we have as many as over 60 members uh, who are very active in the field of dance research. One of our forms of activity is uh, um, publishing uh, this uh, academic uh, or a scientific uh, periodical. This is the uh, 20th um, volume of Studia Choreologica. So this is the effect of uh, 20 years of our work. The first 10 volumes were published uh, at the uh, Choreology Forum without any uh, external funding. Usually we did it uh, from our own pocket and we uh, published it in English because at that time uh, we wouldn't find readers in Poland. And we uh, decided that uh, this periodical could be available in English even for this um, small group of people. Ten years later we created the, we established the forum and uh, this title, uh, Studia Choreologica, uh, went into the hands of uh, the forum. So uh, the, the recent ten volumes in Polish, I believe, have built a true tradition uh, and we've uh, been noticed now in Poland, but thanks to the first 10 volumes that were published in English, uh, we have been noticed abroad as well. What's the distribution system? Could you share this uh, information with uh, our audience? Well, this, is a, this isn't our strongest point, unfortunately, the distribution. Uh, and also the number of copies uh, isn't too great. We uh, give uh, the majority of the copies for free and we also sell them via uh, the website of the uh, Choreology Institute and also the Polish Choreology Forum and also at meetings that are held annually. We have uh, the conference of the Polish Choreology Forum every year and we 
try and be present in different uh, parts of uh, Poland. We also encourage young researchers to, uh, to become interested in this field. So yes, when it comes to distribution, it is a major problem. Okay, so you uh, publish the periodical every year, and uh, I believe this will be uh, a tradition, right? For some time, the articles that were published in our periodical were the results of conferences. But this is a thing of the past. Now we also publish articles that just come to the editor's office, and the fact that the periodical is uh, published once a year is that the material that we need to gather, and usually uh, these are 20 articles uh, per, per a periodical, uh, need to undergo certain procedures so that we can call ourselves a scientific journal. And this is a time-consuming process. So a text that comes to us is then checked by, uh, initially checked by the editor, then uh, it is reviewed by two uh, reviewers, who obviously need time for that. Uh, and then there's the editing process, where we take into account uh, the reviewer's comments. And uh, currently our editor's office uh, includes five members. Um, initially there were only two members, so that wasn't easy. Currently we have five members of the editing office. Uh, however, uh, you know, people who work at the office don't have employment uh, contracts, so our situation isn't as easy as of other uh, journals. So. This is uh, the problem of all our community. Uh, so lack of possibility of uh, publishing uh, elsewhere than uh, on uh, the internet. Where information gets dispersed or, or gets to some archive which isn't easily accessible. So what we are lacking is this physical periodical, um, which obviously could also have its digital version. So uh, here's my question to Professor Juros. Is the Institute of Music and Dance uh, a good place or could, ins could the Institute take patronage over a magazine, um, a periodical? that could be published on a regular uh, basis and that it wouldn't be published uh, every year, every six months or even every quarter, but that could be published every month. Yes, we have noticed um, such a need and for the past two or three years uh, we've included a permanent subsidy for Studia Choreologica uh, periodical uh, in our budget, so that you don't need to um, uh, apply for money through a competition. We also have our portal uh, where we publish uh, not only uh, news, but also critiques, um, columns, uh, interviews, reviews, and this is something we wish to develop. But we also need to uh, have um, a periodical that would be in paper and uh, that could last uh, for, for um, longer. Yes, I, I do believe in paper. Paper um, doesn't get burned. Uh, yes, I, I also believe that this digital reality is more fleeting. So, yes, this is another task that we uh, need to um, tackle. Oh, I'm very glad that you're interested. Yes, but uh, we can't do it without you. Well, we are ready uh, to do it and people who are together with us in the audience, they are also interested in having such a periodical. After all, 
they are involved in dance research and they'll gladly become part of such a project. I know that uh, it won't be done uh, tomorrow or after tomorrow, but I do hope that during the next Congress we'll be, um, we will be able to post um, ourselves uh, with um, a new um, copy of uh, the journalism. Now, money, that's another issue, uh, obviously, when it comes to publishing a dance periodical. Uh, we will have to win some money, we will have to search for funding. And um, here we would uh, probably approach uh, the Institute, but the question is, where are other sources of uh, fundraising? Where else can we find the money? BMW representative took part at the second panel, yes, uh, but uh, we are not going to talk about uh, garden parties. No, uh, but um, I've been thinking how to combine our funding with the funding from the Ministry of Science. And uh, there, although I don't actually have uh, um, well-developed mechanisms of cooperation with the Ministry of Science, but uh, this could be quite a source of funding, so we might think that way. So can we declare today that we will establish an, a group at the Institute of uh, Music and Dance that will deal with the future of um, a magazine that will be a magazine of, with um, criticism and essays on dance. Magda Yuzhvik uh, might be Magda Yuzhvik might uh, be subscribing people, but Magda Yuzhvik is going to uh, take a two weeks long leave after this congress. Uh, yes, uh, but we need an initiative group where people will work free of charge uh, to raise some funding so that in the future they can earn very little money working for a magazine writing about dance. I declare that I will be glad to form such a working group and we do have this item that is called magazine and I even gave a title to this magazine and it is in our program of activities of the Music Institute of Music and Dance so waiting for you. Okay, thank you very much. Researcher and uh, critic, Hanya uh, Rashevska korsa I know that you are very serious about uh, the two um, components surname. So, she is the person who has been observing dance life in Poland uh, um, very um, intensively, and you have been like a nomad traveling from place to place whenever there are workshops or festivals taking place or conferences taking place, you are always there. So what is your perspective and what do you think of um, the uh, possibilities uh, that uh, writers about dance have today? What do you see as uh, still ill-functioning or not functioning? Thank you for an invitation to take part in this Congress. Before I start speaking, I would like to rectify something in the materials. There is a mistake. If you um, turn aside the ID, either Dr. Hanna Rashevska Kursa, I'm not yet a PhD. I still need one. Soon you will be. Yeah. Yes, but we're fortune tellers. Uh, yes, but I'm very grateful to the person who made that mistake, so please don't be stressed out. For me, it's just a good uh, omen. But, but just um, uh, to be exact, I would like to rectify that. Now, could you please show my presentation? And because we have limited time, I will simply read out my um, statement. I've been asked to talk about research and critique from the generation point of view. I was asked to talk about my generation. And I'm going to speak from a specific point of view. A freelancer, 38 years old, determined and resigned sometimes. At better times, resigned, but still determined. I would like to say that um, research and criticism, those are two different things, but some things are similar. What is more and what may surprise you, many problems are uh, similar to 
the ones that artists face. Something that we spoke about yesterday. Uh, I'm supposed to change slides myself, so I have to press a button. Oh, there we go. So this is a generation without um, full employment, and people, when I say that uh, a right, uh, living off criticism is difficult, others say it has always been the case, it has always been bad, but it doesn't mean it should always be that way. We have unstable working conditions, and that affects, uh, affects negatively our lifestyles. Being a freelancer has advantages and disadvantages, and uh, uh, being a freelancer uh, uh, because of no other options is a bad option. We do not have uh, paid sick leaves and um, uh, holidays, but less known things. Um, a contract is usually signed after a publication. First, uh, they order text, and when the text is written, uh, written, they do not buy it. Or sometimes a text, be it a research text or critic uh, text, uh, is waiting for months to be published, and we, the authors, are waiting for months to get paid. And our negotiation position is all too weak. And even if a contract is signed, uh, um, we are not secured in the case of cancelling a performance. A, a, a performance cancelled means a text cancelled. And Malgorzata Davidex says that freelancers are defenseless. The same happens with research. Usually, when we do research, there is no income, so we need to do some other job uh, to earn um, the money, uh, which is to the disadvantage of um, research. And for instance, uh, the uh, the institute um, 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 in initiated a program that is called the Blank Pages, and um, um, the way they pay is that a quarter of the money is paid in the beginning of the research, half of it is paid midway through, and the remaining quarter is paid at the very end. So the Blank Pages um, um, program is something that helps the researchers, and my postulate to is to increase the budget um, for the uh, Blank Pages program run by the Institute of Music and Dance, but also um, um, uh, critiques uh, are not numerous um, and they're uh, overworked, overloaded, and there is a lot of conflict of interest. Conflict of interest is too big an area to discuss right now. And also multitude of tax, but uh, no contracts means that it's difficult to specialize. We're expected to be versatile, to present knowledge about any form of dance. We're expected to speak about education and many other aspects of dance life. But specialization is necessary, otherwise we become superfluous. Another problem, not only freelancers' problem, but also of other people on, on the, on the, uh, the full-time contract, we love our job, which is good, but the problem is that we love it so much that sometimes we have to fight to do the job and um, eventually we are subject to being abused. Um, it is easy to offer us bad conditions to work because we want to work, we are, are keen on dance and sometimes we forget about our own good. Um, being overworked, uh, overproduction, uh, being not interventable kills um, the people of dance and dance itself. And the main problem for research is the, uh, the uh, projectosis, uh, that is uh, uh, when we keep on fighting for grants. Those projects should complement a constant form of activities, but projects have, um, the gig economy has replaced the proper activity. So sometimes we spend too much time getting, trying to get a grant which we do not eventually get, and then we feel helpless. The result of effectiveness and um, no possibility of working in the long term run means that we run out of ideas for research, and sometimes uh, when we research history, we need to sit in archives, which I love to do, but you need to spend a lot of time there, read, and it's not about effect, but simply to somehow combine historical knowledge to complement knowledge that may be useful in the future, which is time consumer, and freelancers do not have time. And also, we also need to be trained all the time, and we need to present papers and 
uh, discussing them at conferences. But conferences mean that we have to pay fees. Sometimes we have to pay 200 or 300 slotters just to be able to speak. And sometimes we have to add the cost of travel and the cost of accommodation. Also, it's difficult to find sources of knowledge, to find books. And here I have postulated about the bibliography of dance. And, um, and we also understand that this uh, Congress uh, is to present a number of postulates. So the bibliography of dance, that is writing down what has been written in Polish uh, about dance in the period 1945 to 1966. And um, uh, such bibliogra bibliography has already been done by two professors. And that bibliography was um, uh, published as six um, uh, notebooks and they're available in libraries. But then the next uh, period of 50 years, that is 1967-2017, uh, that bibliography was uh, done by Alexander Kemmerer and Susanna Komitor and Hanna Raszewska Kursa within the framework of uh, the Blink Pages uh, program run by the Institute of Music and Dance. We also have a huge Excel file with 7,500 entries. And, um, and there we see everything that's been written about Polish bands for that 50 years. And uh, therefore it is uh, absolutely important to create a team at the Institute of Music Dance that shall complement the areas that we have omitted and will continue the current uh, bibliography of what is being written about uh, dance these days because we're finished with 2017, which means that now we are already moving on into um, other uh, studia choreologa and other editions and this means dozens of texts and um, hundreds of texts are being written. I'm not going to talk about bibliography because I could spend hours in doing so. Now to continue, I was asked about the uh, training and self-training. Well, let me speak from two perspectives, as a student and as a lecturer. As a student, I myself graduated uh, from the postgraduate uh, studies of the theory of dance. This is a fantastic trampoline to the profession, but this is postgraduate course. and um, and. Um, it is important to create a standard uh, five major course, um, um, uh, um, not to mention the name of it, it could be anything, Co uh, choreology is a good name, but okay, fine, but let's just have uh, the course, the five-year course, which will give uh, detailed information about the dance, of, uh, the science of uh, dance. And if today we're not talking about artist uh, studies with theoretical compl complementation, but focus only in theory, we also have postgraduate uh, courses and some individual courses, but this is not enough. From the point of view of a teacher, didactic work is not only the hours, uh, teaching hours, but this we need to spend time for self-training and preparation and uh, uh, verifying the work done by students. and. Uh, um, the churn of young staff is huge and the pedagogical talent is being wasted. Uh, there are many teachers who eventually get older and they say goodbye to teaching activities. That is because of the employment conditions and the salaries being too low. And there are some replacement initiatives sometimes. Those are workshops and they're subject to subsidy and um, that depends uh, on the annual uh, programs, uh, but it is difficult to, to plan for development. And the last part, one point, and I'm looking at my watch following my time, I was asked uh, uh, during the preparation, I was asked to ask why um, criticism beca is becoming less uh, critical, but become, is becoming more descriptive and analytical. Well, I don't think so. I rather have the feeling that we simply have a larger scope of uh, critical styles. Uh, there are people who have uh, very exact opinions. Some people are more uh, or reviewers and more analysts. And um, I was. Um, and I also represent one of those styles. I don't think that the viewership could be educated by a review. I rather believe in direct conversation and artists write to me with questions, what do you think about my performance? And I always write back. However, when writing publications, my objectives are threefold. First, I'm an intermediary between the stage and the viewers. 
I'm suggesting ideas, I'm showing the context, I'm communicating not only with the professional viewers, but I'm also communicating with private viewers. Second, uh, for, uh, second objective is to support what is good in the performance, and third, it's the documentation of uh, uh, dance life, and I am a chronicler. But also text is the expression of the writer, and we forget about it. So let us give the writers um, to be eclectical and um, showing different embodiments of dance. We're not always reviewers as critics. If you want to, uh, to find more critical text, you may find other authors who always pinpoint the weaknesses of a performance. But the problem is not about the lack of supporting criticism, but sometimes uh, different styles of criticism um, um, are too diverse. I'm thinking about uh, space. I'm thinking that the journal would be a great space for um, would be a great space uh, for presenting different ideas. And as far as the magazine is concerned, here are my uh, postulates. Um, I've mentioned most of them, but just in bullet points, we need to update the report on the condition of dance for two, since 2011. That's a very interesting research subject. Uh, and I don't know, I think there is this failure in um, it kind of uh, the first uh, the web page of the first dance congress disappeared from the internet. Is it still there? Yes, it is there. Uh, okay, great. So good. So because I was simply digitally incapable uh, despite being in this uh, digital generation. Anyway, there is a report on the condition of dance from 2011 from different regions in Poland. That report was drafted by many people and I think that it would be great after 10 years in 2021 to revisit those regions with these reports and see what has changed. Another postulate that I have not mentioned is uh, kinetography and uh, a banish of notation at ballet schools. Yesterday, Karol Ur uh, Urbanski said that uh, uh, kinetography and banish of notation is a, a good way um, uh, to uh, to deal with, and, and many people specialize in kinetography. Ursula Virgotska directly deals with that. Um, um, also, generational transmission, and uh, I was the student uh, of uh, two professors, uh, also of Professor Ursula Vilgotska, and uh, also there is the Warsaw Laboratory of Kinetography. I would advertise ourselves. We deal with notation. We are invisible because we are not employed by dance companies. Uh, but uh, we also offer our services. And um, as, as, but some things are utopian, and uh, perhaps uh, rates should be improved, uh, and uh, also automation of uh, uh, choreology as a part of um, uh, uh, humanitarian uh, humanist sciences. Um, so we should be somehow combined with visual arts, uh, with uh, uh, theatre studies, cultural studies, uh, but it is a discipline of knowledge and it should be formally distinct. And the last slide. So here we see some postulates as uh, for our posture. Uh, so we need to allow for diversity in different styles of uh, critique uh, and perceptics uh, and we should put an end to being overworked and overloaded. We live in neoliberal uh, effectiveness that drains us from our energy. For the good of dance and for the good of people, this must end. We should create, research and write less but better. And uh, uh, and this is has this has been. You've been listening to the voice of the generation. Thank you, the voice of generation. To trochę tak jak Iza Chlebińska bis. That was Iza Chlebińska uh, uh, once more, actually. Okay, we heard about similar problems yesterday. And uh, I'm sure that many of you know these problems. These are not only problems of the current generation. Well, what we could uh, propose now, suggest now, before this new culture uh, becomes a standard, uh, is that we start from ourselves.
and that we try a similar union of critics and dance researchers similar to the union of choreographers. You know, so uh, a union and association that could represent this um, uh, group uh, legally. Yes, but we have our forum, Choreology Forum, the Polish Choreology Forum. It's a Polish association which um, acts uh, this way too. I believe that the role of the forum uh, is uh, factual, so it helps us when it comes to research and uh, discourse, but I'm not sure whether forum can represent us the way a trade union could. So I believe that there's a different competence here. I believe that we could definitely expand our uh, competence. Uh, well, so far we've had... Um, other needs, but if there's this need to represent critics, uh, researchers legally, then definitely we could do it. Yes, but there's this association of theater critics. Uh, yes, but I don't write about theater. Okay, but maybe you could have this subsection there, the subsection of uh, dance critics. So as part of the Polish Association of Theatre Research, which has this um, academic character, mm. well, there has been created a group of young researchers and it operated very nicely for a couple of years, but it's not a trade union. The, there's ZASP, this is the trade union, but you need to organize yourselves as part of ZASP and fight for your professional rights. I don't believe that uh, we should, uh, you know, have this greater and greater number of um, associations uh, that would just overlap and, um, you know, compete uh, against one another. Let's create just one uh, and, uh, and a good one. Well, it's a good piece of information that uh, the forum could actually uh, have this function because, yes, I also believe that we could use the structures that are already there. Now, you told us to fight, but I, uh, I'll tell you that sometimes, you know, we are too weak uh, to uh, fight again. We've just lost our strength. Uh, and that's why I have this postulate. Yes, but Zas offers you this ready, uh, this tested structure. You can enter this association and this is the association that will help you fight for your professional rights. It won't help you unite uh, uh, researchers that will uh, share their um, scientific uh, views, but you know, it might help you when it comes to legal issues. Yes, I believe that what Hania is saying, and all of us are saying, but maybe we just use different terminology, is that in such a structure you need to have some autonomy so that you are not perceived only through the prism of theatre. Because, you know, when it comes to dance, we are always treated as part of theatre or music or art in general. We need some independence. And it would be good to create this group that would start uh, talking to ZASP to create this subsection of dance within the section of theater. Um, and that this subsection would know the uh, dance circle and represent people uh, so that we no, but in ZASPs there's the dance section, but artistic section. Yes, but we have a representative there, uh, actually the head uh, of the section. Yes, I'm sure Monika will explain everything to us. Okay, so maybe let's give uh, the floor to Monika, who's a brand new uh, 
president of this uh, section, but who's experienced in ZASP. Let me tell you that as I'm listening to your problems, I believe that they are very similar to our problems. This world of dance cannot be abstracted from the dance of uh, dance theory or dance criticism. Yes, uh, I'm this uh, f freshman uh, when it comes to um, being uh, the um, chair of the section. Well, as you know, ZASP was established in 1918, so it's over 100 years old, and uh, from the very beginning it was there to make sure that uh, the art created was of the greatest quality and that people involved in it had the right conditions to work. And this organization uh, lasts today and it represents different uh, professions, uh, different theatre professions. We're all theatre artists and Within ZASP, there's the um, section of dance and ballet, and it's my honor to be chair of it. Uh, now, in 1993, uh, a postulate was um, made to create the uh, uh, theater uh, section, and historically, there's been no one there who would deal with dance criticism. Yes, ZASP has the structures, They've been there for quite a long time and it is open to everybody who are uh, active in the field of art and I am definitely open to your needs and, well, I will uh, speak about it later in my statement. So I do invite you to join us. We have quite many possibilities. Uh, you can instantly join the section of theatre critics and if you are determined and there's... Uh, an adequate number of you, I'm sure that you will also be able to create the dance critics section. Well, this theatre critics section isn't that big, it's just 25 people. So, if you think about, you know, the territory of Poland and, uh, you know, how popular theatre criticism is, that isn't much. Uh, so, well, we do need you, dance critics, um, to, to promote this field and we artists need you. And you can definitely find uh, room for yourselves there within these structures. Well, obviously we'd like to uh, make these structures better and uh, more relevant. But apart from the structures that we can offer, we also uh, can offer uh, some funds. Maybe these funds aren't enormous, but, uh, you know, uh, it's always good to have um, uh, at least some uh, funding. So do join our association. We, um, as part of the theater um, critics section, uh, have this award uh, that we uh, present uh, to theater critics. Maybe you could have a similar award yourselves. Now, uh, the section that associates dance artists and choreographers, they also have uh, their award. Uh, the most important one is the Herb Sihora uh, statuette that we uh, present to uh, the best dance artists. And I'm sure that the uh, dance and ballet uh, section could also um, award uh, dance critics with um, statuettes. So I am very pleased that there are more and more of you and I'm, uh, I'm happy to, to be around you. Now, ZASP also has its quarterly. Unfortunately, it's only a quarterly, so it cannot meet all your uh, demands and me needs, but it is published regularly and it's called Polish Stages, uh, Sceny Polskie, and uh, we'll be happy to publish your text there. Uh, it is published in paper, and this is important, and 
in our quarterly you can find text on the current activity of our association but also text on theatre, on dance uh, performances. Well, until uh, recently they were just announcements of uh, performances or um, just um, texts uh, commemorating uh, certain figures. But I'm sure that you could successfully uh, publish text there uh, for a wider uh, audience, for, for a wider range of uh, readers. Obviously, there's uh, this section in this uh, quarterly that concerns Polish dance, but it is actually my dream, after 25 years of my work, that dance becomes so natural and that uh, its presence in our life is so natural uh, as natural as breathing and obviously you should say that it is elitist but at the same time we uh, should make sure that this term is well understood now the art of dance is still an art but it would be good if uh, the viewers were competent enough to understand this art so, uh, promotion of your publications on uh, our website or on Facebook, because, well, being present in the social media is important because then the coverage is, is greater. I believe that your presence there would comp contribute uh, to improving the um, status of your publications uh, and the autonomy. Because I fully, um, I believe that you deserve the autonomy you ask for. And I believe that it would be worth showing dance separately against the background of drama and music. And also to build this awareness of art among people who are already interested in arts. Now, yes, this is definitely our goal, but as uh, the host of this uh, discussion, uh, I need to keep the time, so unfortunately I need to stop you now, so uh, we will come back to uh, your topics when we have our discussion, um, when we have our discussion. Now, for the past three days I've uh, talked to, I've listened to different thoughts voiced during the panels and one thought has uh, just come to my mind. We know very little about ourselves, about each other. We know very little uh, about who does what personally, but we also know very little about certain places, venues, prospects, uh, magazines, associations and so on. Uh, you know, uh, places, uh, magazines that could support us, help us and where we could find a place for ourselves. I believe that it's wonderful that uh, the forum represents such a uh, large percentage of uh, the uh, environment of the community because this means that we can get practical knowledge on what to do, whom to turn to, where to voice our postulates and where to maybe shift our activity or redirect it somehow. Well, I must say that I uh, feel that uh, I got uh, a lot of information uh, here. I feel enriched with uh, these pieces of information and uh, I'm sure these things won't have to be repeated during the third Congress uh, because the directions have already been set. Now, Joanna Szymajda has been setting a direction uh, for uh, many years now. Well, she's devoted a lot of her uh, research time to France, but uh, you know, having completed her studies uh, at the uh, Sorbonne, she came back to Poland and now she shares her experience with us. You are very knowledgeable, uh, just as many uh, artists uh, who 
uh, work uh, in uh, the sphere of dance are. Uh, you uh, are a manager, a curator, a reviewer, a researcher. At the same time, which of these roles is the closest to your heart? Uh, and in which do you feel most competent and comfortable? And now, what should we do so that uh, all these so that we don't need to have multiple uh, jobs and I don't really mean here um, employment contracts but you know still having many jobs to be able to do what we uh, what we want yes I combine different activities and I personally believe that it's good to have various jobs uh, and it's all right if from time to time I take a break from one job and then uh, take on another one and then come back to the old one with a new and fresh perspective. So for example, once I'm active in the field of management, then I'm more active in the field of research and so on. I've prepared a short presentation which is a diagnosis of the situation of dance research in Poland. I don't want to reiterate what Hania uh, has said, but well, some of um, some of the information that you'll hear will definitely be uh, the same, uh, though we haven't consulted uh, one another. And I'd like to share some examples uh, with you here. And please um, don't treat what I will tell you uh, in a minute as a story about myself. I'm just trying to present to you a hypothetical situation of someone who'd like to deal with dance research in Poland. Uh, I will read my apologies. I usually speak, but I'm going to read. We want to diagnose something that formally doesn't exist because research in the field of dance is this uh, ideal postmodern phenomenon per se. Uh, it has never had great narratives that first could be rejected because they have never been established. I'm focuses on, focusing on Poland. Dance research uses different uh, items, uh, grants, uh, ministerial grants, uh, doctoral studies, uh, grants of the Institute of Music and Dance to create this unstable structure. Now the dance research in Poland but also in other countries in uh, Europe, in this part of Europe, um, try to um, show new uh, paths and new uh, dance trends. Recently, more um, scientific and research institutes have been more uh, open to dance research. There are more and more um, master's thesis and doctoral thesis on dance. Now, doctoral thesis are still quite uh, attractive for universities because then you get greater funds for uh, students and better statistics. But what next? This uh, doctoral studies are actually the first step of um, research uh, development. And still artistic universities are not uh, dedicated institutes to deal with uh, um, dance research. The dictionary of dance is quite an exception as far as research projects are concerned. There is no such university or faculty or perhaps I don't know of such university that would employ people who specialize in research only, that is scientists who deal with dance research only. And uh, some of the researchers, few of them, they also deal with other, in other areas, journalism, sociologists, uh, they know how to teach dance history. And I personally am waiting for the PhD uh, thesis of uh, Mrs. Szywilska. And also we do not have dance at the Polish Academy of Sciences. And um, in principle, apart from Grażyna Dąbrowska, who specializes in traditional dance, uh, otherwise no one else has been working there. And uh, also 
the universities uh, um, employ uh, provide only precarious uh, um, uh, employment for researchers, which means that it is difficult for them to receive grants uh, from uh, the ministerial uh, sources or to organize conferences. So we are not present in the science system, but it is expected for them of them to be uh, high specialists with a scientific degree. The Institute of Music and Dance is program is a unique one because it allows them to run some research activities and to um, take part in international conferences about dance organized by the IMET. Uh, but uh, some other researchers, they talk about dance, they focus uh, on uh, bibliography, but they do not meet the requirements of a scientific work. A researcher is usually a freelancer on precarious employment and has to share his passion with other job. Another problem is the continuity of research, especially, and uh, here this is in the scope of the uh, dance, uh, the policy for the dance development. And again, we may focus the blank pages, uh, pages program and um, the results of it have been published for some time at the web page of EMIT, but now it's not there for some reason. Maybe it would be nice uh, to uh, make that information uh, public again, uh, because um, it's, it's the same postulate as under the statistics that we have received uh, is uh, suspended in vacuum. But 10 years ago, I know that you had a number of reports and it would be nice to compare those reports with the today's uh, situation so as uh, we could uh, have a time perspective of uh, the uh, development or progress or lack of it within the, the last, uh, the previous decade to see what has changed, what has not changed so that we do not have to start uh, so we don't have to start building off the scratch, we should rather build on a foundation. As uh, far as um, um, scientific publications are concerned, as far as magazines are concerned, I also think that we need to uh, base on the foundation and on what already exists. We do not should not create new institutions if there is no such need. And we should um, develop the already existing and uh, not uh, create new institutions and also um, researchers should be independent in uh, their work. Uh, we spoke about the Horologica and um, I'm very glad uh, that um, indeed it's working and that the Studio Horologica is under the patronage of the IMET um, Institute, but uh, this magazine should be bilingual with an international scientific board so that it becomes an international magazine a publication and um, is not merely a local publication because Central Eastern Europe in this sense has not been um, managed well. And we can use this niche and perhaps in the future this would give us a possibility to receive rating by the Ministry of Science. And apart from one magazine, the, the dance, all other magazines all other scientific research are English language and those are American primarily and um, and um, some of those magazines have been there for, since the 1960s and 1970s but they do not uh, publish about our region and uh, another problem is that uh, not many people are interested in uh, uh, the results of scientific work and to meet the scientific requirements uh, should not uh, um, uh, de-hermitize the language. No, quite on the contrary, we are merely developing the language of writing about dance and for the dance to develop this process takes time. So uh, we need to start writing about Polish dance not only in Poland. We should join the international stream. And in the first report, after the first Congress, Aleksandra Juros wrote a postulate the necessity to establish a research scientific unit that would be devoted to dance. And um, I would like to reiterate it in a different form. That is the postulate to the Polish Academy of Sciences. We should uh, reinstitute dance and the Institute of Dance at the Polish Academy of Sciences. This would uh, ensure continuity and working with other 
um, to establish cooperation with other universities and then it would be easier to work also once we lock ourselves within the national borders uh, it would not suffice we because if we lock ourselves within the national borders it would be the least desirable effect so those are the conclusions that I have as a person deals with research and organization and I have been co-creating a cultural policy in the field of dance um, and now sentimentally but also with a sense of responsibility as a researcher I would like to say that I'm glad that this panel discussion is the last one during this Congress because perhaps we have not been able to diagnose what has changed within the 10 years what has been done and cannot be done but I would like to remind you and to those people who took part at the first Congress and also to let those who were not there at the first Congress to know what we were dreaming about 10 years ago and let's see what dreams came true and which of those uh, postulates um, uh, sound naive today but sometimes uh, it's good to be naive let me just read them out I think that uh, most of us know the, what is the condition of dance in Poland is what has changed and what hasn't there were only 10 postulates the first uh, to have um, dance in the operational programs of the Ministry of Culture, postulate number two, to define the job of an artist as answer. Third, to provide full professional education for dancers. Four, abolishing uh, fees uh, for exams uh, and uh, entrance fee to the ZASP. Fifth, uh, to create conditions uh, of, for cooperation of independent dancers with, institutional, with institutions, also improving the work of ballet dancers. Seven, establishing the operational program Dance Plus, that is developing infrastructure for dance. Number eight, developing the uh, infrastructure for dance. Postulate nine, uh, um, professional transformation for dancers and also having a year of uh, dance so as to reinforce the position of dance. So some of those uh, postulates uh, have been implemented and some uh, some of them um, uh, been, have been lost. Some of those postulates are being implemented. Some of them no longer make sense. But, for instance, as far as infrastructure is concerned, we can understand it in broad terms, uh, also from the point of view of legal infrastructure. So, I think that this is uh, still a, a condition that is necessary, because it um, actually conditions uh, all other elements of the development of dance. So, this uh, postulate should be repeated at this Congress. And, um, the today's postulates that we have during this panel discussion and the postulates at the other panel discussions um, they are sometimes sound to me being uh, like the postulates from the olden days from the centrally planned economy we should be more realistic so I have two very simple proposals and maybe those two simple proposals will make these postulates more realistic so that this research and dance uh, criticism will indeed become um, the elements that are well taken care of thank you madam professor Jan, I have uh, to uh, make a reference to a few points. First, if we look at the generation of researchers of dance, then in the 1980s and uh, in the 1990s it uh, was Irina Turska, Irina Pudavak and no one else, absolutely no one else. And only in the beginning of the 21st century there we have uh, more researchers uh, but they work in the universities and uh, they are usually as researchers of art, not in music academies. And, uh, and they specialize in arts. Uh, and this is, you rightly mentioned, but now we have at least three such centers where we have researchers um, they are already holding doctoral degrees 
To jest Wojtek Klimczyk, Patrusek Grzegorz Kondrasiuk i Tomasz Nowak. One są linkami z uniwersytetami. One hołdą scientificzne degree i one też trenują młodych profesjonalów. Wojtek Klimczyk już ma swoje własne PhD studenci. So we see that um, it's developing, and I thought that you yourself in Łódź would create such a center. And uh, our three years of cooperation have not <coughs> have not yet bought the fruit of habilitation and of longer term cooperation. But perhaps we could, you could define that in the Kuluas later on. But one more point. One should not necessarily be a, f a fully employed member of the staff of the university in order to raise funds and receive grants for research from the National Center of Science or from the uh, National Program for the Development of Humanities. Tomek Czesielski, I apologize that um, I am... Um, mentioning his name yet again, he is um, uh, getting grant after grant and within those grants there are, there are possibilities uh, for self-employment and I assure you that um, the remuneration is much higher than the salary of an adjunct at a state university. Yes, undoubtedly this is going to be yet discussed in the second part. Hania, I apologize, I saw you wanted to speak immediately but let us give a chance uh, to the participants uh, who are here in the room and in front of the computer screens. And we have uh, one uh, more uh, speech uh, to hear too. Um, and uh, first let me position myself. Um, I, I feel somewhat strange here but um, I'm still very friendly to the world of dance. I am a curator of performative arts and I understand very well the scope of performative arts. I understand theatre, dance and uh, dance first and foremost uh, in the field of participative uh, art, the engaging art. So I will speak about education a bit And uh, many times um, we speak of um, hermetic language of dance, so I'm making going to reference to that. And I also run specialization uh, for curators. I also work uh, with uh, the arts of media at the Adam Mickiewicz University. And uh, since at the very beginning, it was important for me uh, to uh, introduce a subject as curatorship. Zajęcia prowadziła Joanna Leśnierowska i od wielu lat również Anna Królica. Współpracy. And um, I also work with um, Anna Kamińska, who is the graduate of the dance theatre uh, of the PWST in Krakow. But today she is our doctoral student at the interactive media um, major, that is second degree studies, and she deals with a very interesting research area, which is um, the link between dance and technology. So, at our faculty, we have um, dance and we promote dance uh, both from the point of view of um, uh, curating work and technology. Also, I mentioned as a curator of performative arts, in my practice, I'm including dance in, in the field of engaging art. And last year, for several months, I have been working with Marta. There she is. And for many years, she has been co-creating the Institute of Music and Dance. And we were running a project with Kaya Kowajicic at the Center for Foreigners <coughs> and their children at Praga Północ district of Warsaw. And um, when we were speaking about um, uh, which uh, medium of art to be used so as to work with those uh, people, we thought that uh, dance seems to be the most universal language of world. And in such a center for uh, foreigners, the youth that we have been working with, they speak many different languages. And then what seemed to, to be hermetic, because I'm an artist and we work with artists, 
and the artist we work with, um, uh, she also deals with conceptual uh, uh, art, um, but that dance is the most natural language of understanding with other people. And before that, uh, I was working with Janusz Orlik. Z kołem gospodyń wiejskich w Kołacie, to jest taka wielkopolska wiosna, wioska. I też zainicjowałam projekt, który robi, który realizuje do dziś Mikołaj Mikołajczyk z seniorami. And um, I also spoke with the seniors from the Zakrzewo village and this curatorship practice um, is engaging in a very participative way and it also very much educational and it is very well working in the space of dance. Dance popularizes this very well, and uh, but dance is not hermetic. And when I'm thinking about dance, and um, I will uh, speak about, um, I'll comment on earlier uh, moments, Anna Kraszewska kurs um, she spoke about generations, well I'm a bit older, but uh, I fully agree with your generation, so I do agree with you, and I could say exactly the same about what's happening with us. Kuratorskiej w szerokim spektrum sztuk performatywnym, bo też mam poczucie, że w Polsce jest bardzo wiele podziałów, tak między teatrem dramatycznym, sztuką tańca, sztukami wizualnymi. Ja osobiście staram się. And um, uh, we're trying uh, to combine many different fields of activities, but it's very difficult to find an institution that would help me uh, to work uh, properly. And as a curator, I would like to talk about the institutional context and also would make a reference uh, to Jana's words. Uh, the practicing art on the curator's level and on the producer's level means that we have to immerse in uh, to this milieu of um, cultural policy. And in the case of dance, the point is that this um, distribution of uh, uh, the, the division of powers is quite clear. Just in any big city, we have drama theatres that are very representative. But how much space there is for dance? Is there for dance? Not much space for dance. And um, yes, we have the Polish dance uh, theatre that for many decades have been highly popular abroad and it was um, um, moving from one institution to another and it was always leading uh, to conflicts. We also had the, this uh, theater studio and um, again, they have to keep on negotiating with an institution and they have uh, repertoire based performances and those negotiations were not easy to handle. So you feel as if you are a guest and you have to comply with some conditions. Yes, indeed, the theatre was uh, uh, were, uh, offering some dates, were not the best dates uh, um, uh, from the point of view of attracting the audience. Uh, but um, just like with ballet and opera, they still have to negotiate their access to the stage and also to have negotiate access to the rehearsals uh, room. Yes, exactly. Uh, many times dance in, in the opera is treated as the last um, link um, in this GT tract. Yes, um, uh, many times dance is perceived in the 19th century perspective that is beautiful dancers and my bro brother was a dancer, exactly, he danced at the dance theater. And uh, I was many times uh, um, that hear people saying that they were the dancers um, dancing at the prayer houses. So there are other fields of power uh, that I spoke about you, or Jacques Lancier, who spoke about um, the uh, politicizing of what is visible. How many theatres, dance theatres are there in Poland? How many venues are dedicated to more contemporary dance? Uh, so we all have uh, seen this report uh, uh, drafted by Emilia Cholewicka um, and on the basis of the Rota Ilczyk's research. And you can see this domination of classical ballet, uh, opera theatres and dance theatres. Yes, and the ballets in theatres are still part of this large structure and they are uh, rarely 
visible and barely visible in this uh, structure. So I believe that there should be at least one theatre just dedicated to dance and then it will be this uh, signpost in the space and it will even symbolically uh, take over uh, power. Unfortunately, I need to interrupt you. Agatha, if you could um, share your conclusion with us. Okay, I'll just uh, fight for two extra minutes for myself. Okay, two. Now, when it comes to this symbolic power, again, we don't have grants from the Ministry of Culture and National Heritage dedicated to dance. But even think about these popular uh, awards such as uh, Politica Weekly uh, Passports. Uh, there's no specific uh, award there for dance. Uh, and I believe that really dance should be included in this more general, universal and popular discourse and discussion. Now this material that has been um, prepared by Ms. Cholewicka starts with a quote from David Thorsby who wrote about this intergenerational and multi-generational responsibility. Now, dance was absent for years, um, was absent for years, and uh, this is actually our um, responsibility now, so that we fight for the presence of dance in our uh, symbolic, um, in our reality, and, and that we fight for its symbolic power. And there's also no space for a curatorship of dance. It's very good that there's this uh, office in, in Warsaw that actually carries out a, a project, but still this is the place that you need to commute to. So we don't have this symbolic place, this stage for dance. And I know that we won't solve this problem here and now, but I still believe it's worth taking a closer look at it. And still, we talk about this sur surplus of uh, production and um, about this we could read in this uh, wonderful uh, paper, Artist at Work. And, you know, I myself, as a curator, I don't um, make my um, ends meet uh, as a curator, but as um, a university lecturer. And I must say, I uh, was really moved when I got from the Institute of Music and Dance a contract two weeks before this Congress. Uh, you know, the last contract uh, I got was actually three years ago from a German theatre. Uh, usually you get the contract, you know, three months after you actually uh, did your work. So curators, they work uh, on concepts, they work as authors uh, of the programs of festivals and, and uh, performances, but they also, the curators also deal with the frustrations of artists. So this curator needs to be a therapist at the same time, because I work with people who are greatly frustrated uh, and now even more greatly uh, because of uh, the COVID, um, the coronavirus pandemic. Um, they work uh, under precarious uh, conditions and they need to fight for their remuneration, for their uh, social security. And I'd like to mention uh, the issue of uh, transparent rules. Yes, maybe maybe let, later during our discussion. I have just one remark to your uh, statement before we move on to discussion. You said that dance was absent uh, in Poland for many, many years. I've already mentioned that uh, I'm from the generation that remembers dance before the year 1989. It was present, but differently. There was no room for independent and contemporary dance. Uh, indeed, it was institutionalized uh, dance, but when it comes to its artistic uh, standard, uh, it was at a very high level, and it was also present uh, worldwide, uh, internationally. But this 
uh, so this um, artistic uh, or creative potential didn't start after 1989. No, uh, well, I used a mental shortcut. Uh, it also had problems then. No, but it was covered by the media more broadly. Uh, of course, there was no internet, but there were uh, three or four um, daily newspapers in every city. There were more TV channels. We've talked uh, about it to um, Miss uh, Tiz, who said that uh, you cannot uh, now um, watch uh, these performances due to uh, legal uh, reasons, due to the legal flaws. And, um, you know, I'm this uh, dinosaur here, but my memory doesn't fail me. Yes, what is this this great output of the uh, dance theatre uh, are actually all the structures that we have. Now, we had a different political and uh, economic system back then. Uh, would you like to add um, something, uh, Director? Well, you said that uh, the ministerial uh, programs have no grants for dance. Um, it's not true. Uh, there are such grants. But I also must apologize for the fact that uh, in this program uh, you uh, are named um, only as Agatha uh, and your uh, your degree isn't uh, mentioned, uh, and um, after all, you're uh, a PhD. Yes, it was just a, it's a mistake uh, in typing. Uh, yes, I got your PhD title instead. Um, yes, just uh, just an error. We apologize. Okay, we're moving on to our discussion. Uh, you can please use the microphone. They have been disinfected. Poprosimy o mikrofon po lewej stronie, żeby był włączony, bo mikrofon mam. Okay, we have the mic. We just need to turn it on. Poprosimy o drugi mikrofon. E, trzeci już. Hmm. To ja osobiście Tomku do ciebie przyjdę. Okay, I'll come to you, Tomek, so that you can use my mic. Okay, good morning, Tomek. You can't touch it; it's mine. Okay, thank you very much for this uh, panel. I need to congratulate you on your work again. Now, I have two questions and two requests. Um, I would also like to ask you, Anna and um, Agatha for a comment. Now, when it comes to grants, it's not all that rosy. Now, I was just lucky to go through this academic path and I was lucky to have lecturers and professors that supported me. You know, writing grants, that's another issue and uh, it is important that you know how to do it uh, if you uh, operate in the field of art. However, what concerned me greatly was this love for paper. I do appreciate Studia Choreologica uh, as um, a paper uh, magazine. But there's a problem with that. It's also a great challenge. This is uh, something I meet um, in my work. Uh, because now, on the one hand, we want to enter this uh, international discourse 
uh, and uh, you know their discourse is different uh, I'm not saying that ours is worse no it's just different And if we deal with science, we, uh, you know, we um, have to uh, meet the standards and parameters that other sciences uh, do. And obviously, if you have a publication in English and it is available online, uh, it is more valuable. So what conditions should be created for uh, Polish publications in English on dance so that uh, they are beneficial for uh, researchers, um, that they support their further uh, studies. And in English-speaking uh, discourse, there are very few publications in Polish or generally for, from uh, Central and Eastern Europe. Now, it was said here that uh, dance is the second most popular uh, hobby uh, after um, soccer in Poland. No, it's in England. Okay, but could you still comment or, or, or show us the strategies that we could use in curating dance? And I'm not uh, telling you that we need to teach the audience what dance is, that we actually know better and we need to teach others. No, how to uh, moderate um, this, this, this audience and make it aware uh, of, for example, who Konrad Drzewiecki was. Well, I believe these are questions to uh, Professor Leiko, right? But Ursula Loba Wilgotska also would like to comment uh, on your question. Professor, over to you. No, I've never said that obtaining a grant from the National Center for Science is easy. I've just said that it's possible and you are the best example of this, as well as Wojciech Klimczyk is. But yes, this is... Uh, high-level uh, research and getting a grant from the National Center for uh, Science uh, is really something for um, a researcher. It means uh, recognizing his work and it means not just creating uh, a, a calendar of uh, research events but it means posing uh, relevant questions. And that's why I said that methodology was so important. Now there's this national program for the development of the humanities, but it also sets different uh, demands and uh, it, uh, it is intended more for team uh, research, not individual research. And there you can also apply for a grant but uh, it is actually for uh, research that's more um, documentary-based. Both grants are open for um, dance researchers, but they just have different demands and expectations. Now, when it comes to publications, you know, uh, scores for... Uh, publications is a different thing than this uh, than the fact that you uh, need to get points for your uh, publication so for example you say that Ratlich uh, gives 200 points to uh, to a researcher and the majority of university uh, publishing houses uh, give just 80 credits to uh, the publication, which obviously is important. The same concerns publications in magazines. Polish theater, uh, theatrology magazines, to which uh, uh, dance researchers have access to, uh, give you uh, 40 uh, credits uh, tops while Kidal gives you 
140 credits. Well, those who are not obliged to uh, show the number of credits at universities, so those who are not employed by universities, they can actually apply to uh, international uh, periodicals, but here uh, the main obstacle is funds. So, Yoasha publishes her books uh, via Ratledge uh, Publishing House. Now, I didn't want to offend anyone by what I was uh, saying. Obviously, I know that Wojtek and Tomasz Nowak, well, they also have to be present in other fields of uh, study, such as uh, musicology or sociology, to be able to conduct their research on uh, dance. I was uh, also saying that, you know, it was a matter of time before we actually, uh, before research is uh, more open to dance too. Now, this book that I published via Ratledge, um, you know, was uh, possible only because I collaborated with the Institute of Music and Dance and the Ratledge uh, publishing house already. But Ratledge in its catalogue doesn't have any um, um, entries from our uh, region. And after all, they publish a lot in English. And therefore, you need to be able to work with someone who will proofread this text for you and to, to make sure that it can be actually published in English. It's great that we managed to publish that book at the time. It was uh, the book about the development of Polish contemporary dance after the year 1990. And uh, there were uh, many... Uh, authors of that uh, publication and they also got credits for having uh, their work published by this renowned publishing house. But I believe it would be wonderful if um, universities could have a long-term uh, collaboration with uh, certain publishing houses. And, uh, but, but funds cannot be uh, underestimated here. Now, before I give the floor to Ursula, uh, let me just uh, comment on what you have said. Yes, this is a process uh, and it is important that you collaborate with international um, uh, magazines that give you uh, many credits. Uh, it is also important that this way we promote this Polish art of dance abroad. Well, but you need to assume that this uh, international periodical or English-speaking periodical uh, will be interested in, in your publication. But we are at this stage when we feel uh, this great need that we actually use what is available on the Polish market. Uh, so that our Polish publications, including research publications, are published here. Uh, I believe that uh, the market is already saturated with translations of research papers. Uh, it's good, it's all right. So we uh, know these uh, papers, we know the terminology, uh, you know, people, um, events, but we still uh, don't have uh, the right number of Polish publications. Because only with more publications we could have a broader perspective of what is happening. Of course, there's this Polish dance chronicle that hasn't been mentioned yet. It's a program of the Institute of Music and Dance. Uh, and uh, 
This research uh, concerns uh, dance uh, from 1918 until today. And Madam Director is the head of this project, and here we also see some space for some theoretical thought. Uh, but what we miss, we miss uh, uh, Polish publications, uh, publishing houses, Polish publishing houses. After three days, I started losing my vocal cords, just like after 48 hours of lecturing. Uh, so we are missing f uh, Polish uh, publishing uh, publications for the Polish readership, not necessarily scientific academic reader who is trying to identify dance art at the highest level. And Ursula has asked to speak, yes, talking about uh, uh, the postulate of Anna Schmeider and also answering Mr. Tomasz. I have good news, but first I would like to thank you, Anna, who signed the letter of intent on uh, constant uh, co-financing of the Studio Chorologica, and this is actually happening. It's the third year now, and this year is going to be quite exceptional, but within a month or two months we're going to have the 21st volume that is going to be a bilingual volume. In the Scientific Council, we will have yet another person from abroad, but from Politipis, that is from Italy, this is going to be Agribaka from Norway. And we managed to um, start cooperation, a co-editor in the English language, Professor Andrei uh, Machevsky, and uh, I hope that this will give good, um, will ensure a good level of publication. So I'm very pleased to communicate that. Um, any more questions, please? I was uh, I was asked to speak about um, a possibility of uh, curating in order to educate. Well, I think it's important before we uh, before I give an answer to the question who Konrad Zhivetsky is, we have to go to a different level because this education should start at an early school. Yes, there was this panel, Agata, that we spoke about it, but I just would like to say how to do it from the curator's point of view and how to link it with the curatorship. So, education and So we go to theatres, we go to the theatre of animation or drama theatres, uh, and if we do want, uh, uh, and uh, we don't uh, see, um, uh, we do not attend uh, dance events as we're children. Jana Lishnarovska uh, created an interesting, innovative uh, program. Um, her idea is that uh, she organizes cycles of meetings and debates and uh, dance workshops for the audience, with the audience, and uh, there are also workshops. Uh, uh, for professionals and also there is uh, old brewery new dance for children this is uh, a program addressed to children and um, their guardians and uh, parents and uh, this is early education so on the one hand this is uh, educating parents and guardians and on the other hand this is educating children and uh, also there are participative uh, projects so we uh, enter a space with a dance where art and culture are not actually present and we can do a lot because then it turns out that dance is less hermetic than the drama theater in such space uh, dance is more universal so the, as uh, far as educational strategies are concerned in the greater work, we need to have some basics because we are not going to alter the dance space, we're not going to uh, alter uh, the uh, world and Poland if we're not educating. So dance may be combined with many other uh, strategies and, and trends uh, and activist movement and uh, dance uh, could be uh, present in such subjects as uh, humanities, environment, uh, empathy, promoting empathy uh, as Carol Gilligan was doing and so on and so forth. Um, we are we have merely 25 minutes left for this panel discussion, and this is an opportunity for the participants. Karol Urbański. I feel like at the meeting of horse breeders, uh, but um, and um, um, of course I don't want to impose uh, my conclusions on anything. Uh, because we've been speaking about um, uh, curatorship and uh, popularizing, but um, but I think that more uh, traditional space of dance is subject of your interest. Uh, when I've been uh, head of the uh, ballet at the Szczecin Castle, and um, and the Polish critic um, um, appeared 
uh, only once. There was one person only who joined us. Uh, so one of the leading critics uh, wrote uh, um, openly, I did not come uh, to Szczecin, maybe I will make amends. Uh, but it's not only about uh, Szczecin, it's not about my city, but I have this feeling that you exclude some spheres of dance, of traditional understood dance, that, and, uh, and I have no problem with that. However, could you please make a reference? I mean, if, you, if, if indeed there is certain exclusion, excuse me if I may add uh, something to Karol Urbanski's words. As a practitioner, for I myself was dancing uh, on, on the stage, I'm a choreographer as well, and this is my appeal to you. You, we need you so badly, and what you do uh, with your reviews or criticism that Hanna spoke about so nicely, and um, I liked uh, the analytical criticism that indicates both strengths and weaknesses, but our milieu, so maybe it's just my perception, but perhaps we're too far away from each other. That is, our functioning in art and our artistic pathway is also important for you and also you're responsible for the words that you write. And um, what you have uh, mentioned, also Madam Professor, in the introduction that artists do not actually like when the work of art is, scrutin is scrutinized. Sometimes it is painful, but there is no other way for us as creators to develop. And this is uh, the way we can explain our point of view. So we give this uh, additional dimension, historic and uh, context. But could you please answer the question? Let me try. Hanna Rashevska wanted to speak. Uh, so I will present merely half of my thought and the other half will be presented by my colleague. So speaking about that you need us and uh, we need you more because we uh, follow art. Art is always first. We write about art, we do the research of art and uh, we are a friendly companion that follows. So these words of gratitude go um, both ways. And um, thank you for your question and uh, because uh, this is something this is the topic of specialization, something that I mentioned before. It is not that any critic may write about any form of dance. The question is, are we interested in traditional forms of dance or other forms of dance that we specialize in? Honestly, I would not take, I will not undertake uh, uh, write any text about the ballet at the Szczecin Castle because I'm not competent. I wrote about ballet only three times in my lifetime when it just happened so that there were more competent colleagues could not write about ballet and I had to do it with the help of an editor, Julia Hotchuk, because I am not really competent in ballet, as other colleagues are. Other colleagues are not that competent in the field of uh, dance theatre or new choreography. So I simply do not see here anyone on the stage who could uh, speak specifically about ballet. And I see, and unfortunately this is me. Well, let me say that um, I have lived long and so I remember a lot. And uh, if um, I propose to dehermitize the, the language of uh, dance, this is my postulate and I sustain it, it is not uh, to use the popular language in the scientific discourse, but simply we have to remember that there is something like popular language and in the past uh, there, was, there was a newspaper review. So once I ran classes on criticism, then one of the elements that I'm mindful of, and Hanna, you would confirm, I hope, is um, I'm attentive uh, to a specific uh, uh, defining the addressee and form we address to the addressee. So this is the basis. And I think that uh, given what I have observed, this uh, popular review has disappeared. There is no room for it. 
in everyday uh, newspapers. And that place was the place where we could read uh, reviews from all possible events, including premieres in different uh, theaters. And now what I see is that um, most uh, critics are those who deal with uh, the uh, senso largo contemporary dance, but um, there is just a handful of um, uh, people who would review uh, uh, ballet art and not only uh, classics. And yes, uh, indeed, it calls for specific competencies. People need to know history because they need to place everything in a specific context. And that is not only the context of um, um, dance art, but art as such. And of course, one may try to somehow divide our group in by specialization. So we have the universal reviewers or um, a reviewer specializing in something. But the problem is different. Right now, we don't have uh, we have a small number of critics who are employed um, uh, on a contract. So a newspaper could uh, send them to a theater, pay the costs, pay the bills, and guarantee that the review shall indeed be published. I know only one person who travels all over Poland uh, with zeal and with faith, and this is Stefan Rejewski. And he is no longer employed by a newspaper. He is employed by a university. He is an adjunct at the Musical Academy of Poznan. But still, he keeps on writing. He keeps on traveling. And many times, he buys tickets at his own expense. But this uh, financial blockade may uh, become the real um, uh, stop. Uh, um, because uh, critics, if they are not formally attached to an institution, they will have no money to uh, pay with for uh, and to cover costs of travel to Szczecin, to Bytom or elsewhere. So there is um, um, there is a problem as well. And uh, I also would like to speak to the ZASP Association because there they have uh, this uh, also financial space. Well, there is some room for maneuver there financially and um, from this point of view, it would be great if you could simply become, find your place to ZASP Association. What a beautiful panel. All problems are being solved uh, immediately. Yes, just to um, um, underscore the significance of the Tanitz uh, 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 Polski magazine, because uh, we sent reviewers and critics and they, uh, we were sending them for many years. I hope you read this magazine, but recently, together with the editors um, of our web portal, we took a decision that each theater in Poland, each musical ballet theater in Poland, once a year uh, during the season, will definitely have a review published by us. And I spoke about it as I was meeting uh, the uh, directors of uh, ballet institutions. So, it is an answer to your question, Karol, because you asked us why didn't we go to uh, Szczecin. Well, I assure you, Taniec Polska, at least once, will be delegated to go to Szczecin. There will be a competent person coming and uh, a critic, a review, will, re will write a review. And apart from Stefan Rajewski, who has already been mentioned, there is Katarzyna Kardina, and she writes really well about classical ballet. So I think that this group is somewhat larger. As far as Szczecin is concerned, um, and uh, Szczecin was quite a modern theater when managed by Karol, so you could actually write a review yourself as well. Please use the mic, no mic, no interpretation. And uh, now let us move on to the next question, please. My name is Andrzej Wilk. I work in Polish national media since 1994. In the period 2000-2016, I was run, running a dance service, and we were documenting 20 years of uh, Polish um, dancers. And uh, I was also publishing the first in Poland magazine devoted to modern dance, contemporary uh, dance. It was called Strefa Tańca, and five or six editions were published. I have all of them. Oh, thank you. And um, I have a question which is not typical. 
although it does relate to the postulates that um, have been voiced at, during this panel discussion and at some previous discussions. And that is the postulate that ref relates to the archiving of documentation related to dance, um, uh, dance activities, uh, archiving photographs or video material. And my question is the following. Have you ever thought of um, of doing this archiving job also with the dancer criticism and journalism. Do you have any idea how to archive, not the media materials, because media materials are archived anyway, uh, the, because anything that is published is archived anyway, but how to archive the materials that are written by journalists, by fans, by critics, by theoreticians, and um, they're usually posted at private web pages and blogs at uh, social media, because we're speaking about dozens of articles and we're talking about thousands of pictures. And um, they may disappear at any given point of time, whenever the bill is not paid, whenever the server goes down. So things may happen and that material may be lost. And this is heritage. So is this heritage in any way protected? you're talking about protecting. Well, Sandra, I will tell you immediately with a question. How about copyright? Because all those people would need to get in touch with an institution um, and that has this information because archiving means uh, that it should be made available in the future. So the, all these people would have to transfer a copyright. Yes, but this uh, yes, a system may be developed um, to that purpose, but I simply do not know who would uh, have um, uh, this copyright, to, uh, who would pay for such copyright. And again, uh, we are getting uh, back to the uh, topic of money, which we do not like. Um, but we still need to develop a strategy, legal strategy, that would define how to do that properly. There is a lawyer at the Institute of Music and Dance and uh, perhaps we may ask that question. And there are also lawyers at the uh, ZAIX Association and, and the head of and the head of uh, ZASP is also a specialist in copyright. So I think that there are uh, institutions uh, which could be asked about uh, the way to do it. I simply do not know where to raise funds for this. So as uh, to uh, to do this activity, and then this is my postulate. Okay, thank you. One more question from the room because we have only ten minutes left, and two more questions, two more questions uh, to go through. Hello, Ivana Voynitska, and for some time I've been running the project called Warsaw Dance Project. Maybe I missed that because uh, I was not here on Sunday, but I'm concerned that for two days of uh, discussions, only the only word about, uh, the only mention of history of art was, uh, uh, was uh, the mention by Hanna um, Raszewska Kursa. And I apologize, Ivona. It is not true. Joanna Shidliska also spoke of, but may I finish, please? And I spoke about history. Right, but may I finish, please? May I finish, please? Thank you. Thank you for giving me the floor. So, I am a bit worried that I may be wrong, obviously, but... Um but recently I've been dealing with uh, the legacy of dancers who are still alive and kicking. And it seems to me that in all our discussions we have omitted uh, the testimony of these uh, artists and you know uh, how uh, we could create history and what contribution it could have to the development of our cult culture. 
So maybe you could just reflect on this. Well, let me briefly answer uh, your uh, question. Well, I'm the last person to be blamed here because I deal with dance history and this legacy that you have mentioned is very close to my heart. This is precisely why I am, I'm a member of the Polish Dance Chronicle uh, project and this is where we remember about this legacy. And next year we're going to have, or we're planning to have, an international conference organized by the Institute of Music and Dance, the Theatre Institute and the Adam Mickiewicz Institute. That is three large institutions that um, use their authority and funds to organize an international conference on 20 uh, on the 1920s, uh, so the uh, great avant-garde artists of that time. Mm. As I've said, this is the field that I am particularly interested in, and uh, I am professionally involved in it, and I also encourage others to do that. There's the whole work of Joanna Siewilska, there's also Tomasz Nowak who works on it. So no, we haven't given up uh, working on these um, phenomena. So the work of a historian is the work of an uh, uh, archivist, first and foremost, uh, and it it is time consuming. We have several projects that are uh, carried out, that are being carried out, and that will be completed in two or three years time. So it's not true that we don't deal with it. Again, this proves how little we know about uh, what we do. And Anna Krulica, this will be our last uh, speaker today, because we really need to give the floor to our online audience. Okay, my question is to Ola. I'd like to ask you about a possible program on uh, cur um, curation. Well, we know that the Institute of Music and Dance uh, promotes different programs for different specialists um, of dance. There used to be this uh, program of uh, the Studio Institute, but is there an alternative to, to it? There's very little room for dance curators. My question is whether there's any room for independent uh, curation projects as part of the uh, Spaces for Art uh, program. So will you have the separate program for curators? I also wish to say a couple of words about uh, a magazine, a periodical, a journal. Uh, I'd love uh, such a such a journal, uh, journal to be uh, published and uh, well in the past we thought about um, doing this thing uh, in collaboration with the Book Institute. Uh, currently there are nine such magazines under the patronage of the uh, Polish Academy of Sciences uh, but there's none devoted to dance. But uh, I've also heard that uh, you know, this uh, Institute of Book won't be involved with um, these magazines anymore and that now they will be uh, done by other uh, uh, organizations. So maybe this way we could have a separate magazine for dance this way. And I also appeal to you that uh, there is this... Uh, dance critics um, trade union established uh, within the structures of ZASP uh, association. Now, as it has been uh, said here before, uh, in ZASP you have this dance section and theater critics section, but I'm glad that I've heard here that there's this possibility 
to establish dance critics section. So maybe, you know, the dance critics uh, could gather together and within one month apply to the ZASP association and then start working as part of it. Okay, let me tell you about the STS, uh, the Studio Dance Stage, Scena Tańca Studio. Uh, it's a flagship project for us. And it so happened this this year you cannot use this program because it hasn't been co-founded by the uh, city of Warsaw. Uh, the Institute of Music and Dance had funds for it. However, the city needs to uh, co-finance this uh, project via uh, co uh, co-funding the studio theater. And yes, we really need this uh, stage to be able to continue this uh, curation uh, project. And now this year passed since this stage in the theater, but because we're going to have the 40th edition of this program, this program was actually started by Joanna Shimaida, and you know, it is absolutely necessary for uh, the city of Warsaw. No, uh, that was the result of the entire dance community, not only um, of my efforts. So, as I've said, the program is there, but we just cannot finance uh, all of it uh, on ourselves. So we need to have this uh, the city of Warsaw as our financial partner. Well, again, this shows uh, the fact that we are still lacking our own stage. Now, when it comes to spaces for art, please bear in mind that it's a pilot project. So we are only just building the structures. Uh, we still need to test them, verify them, whether they're relevant. And uh, the moment we get funds, we will definitely add uh, some elements to uh, this project. So yes, maybe these uh, curator, um, curators uh, programs could be included in this project Spaces for Art. And the third question you asked about the uh, journal, the periodical. Well, we need to think what to do. To be honest, I don't have uh, an answer here. We need to check whether this uh, information uh, on the affiliation of the magazines um, at the Book Institute is true. If they will be financed by individual institutes, I understand that this will be this in-kind um, subsidy. And, well, I believe dance will become the field that will also get this subsidy. But uh, this is a question to, um, to the employees of individual ministries. We will verify this. We also have questions from our online audience. And the first um, statement is uh, a request, uh, not, um, not a question. On behalf of dancers, I ask for reviews because this is necessary uh, documentation if you want to uh, have an academic career. Yes, what I can add to it is that I regret the fact that dancers, performers, uh, they are not uh, in the scope of interest of very many um, reviewers. And the second question, have any steps been taken to create doctoral studies in the field of dance? Because I believe that combining uh, research practice and, and uh, to combine research and this uh, and performance would give very good results. 
Now, doctoral studies, that's a separate issue. We need to remember that the current Act of 2018 uh, has reformed uh, this training at the uh, doctoral level. It introduces doctoral schools. I'm not sure which university uh, could gather uh, such a number of candidates for doctoral studies that would be interested solely in dance. But this is not our main problem, because after all, uh, a doctoral school can be part of the humanities, uh, for example. Also, uh, art science. We don't have promoters who uh, would be uh, ready to uh, look after um, PhD students. And another problem are, uh, is money. Because a student of a doctoral school uh, has this privilege to get a scholarship at the level of this um, average remuneration uh, in Poland uh, when they are in the first grade. And then uh, with years this remuneration or this scholarship, um, the amount of money goes up. So at the uh, Wood University there are several doctoral schools. We have a doctoral school together with the Faculty of Philosophy and History. Um, and as part of this doctoral school, we have students uh, who do uh, their PhD in literature, uh, language, um, art sciences, and we got uh, our uh, qualifications uh, only this year. So, aesthetics, that's another um, field where you can uh, carry out your studies. And now all these uh, faculties, they get uh, from 15 to 17 uh, students because this is what um, we can afford, uh, bearing in mind the scholarships that we have to pay. Okay, so that explains a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Okay, Hania Raszewska would like to comment, uh, right? I'd like to uh, refer to this appeal for more reviews. Yes, the reviews that in included the name of the dancer. I believe that we could extend this appeal and say that uh, we appeal for more reviews, more diverse reviews, And uh, this is a follow-up to what uh, Mr. Karol Urbański uh, said. I believe that I can say here on behalf of those who write reviews, we also appeal to you that we can write more, that we can write differently, and that our writing can embrace this whole uh, spectrum of dance uh, output. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for this absolutely magnificent morning. Uh, it will be noon uh, soon and we have still prepared some um, surprises for you. This is the end of our sixth panel of the second day of the second Congress of Dance. So this way, this is also the end of the second Congress of Dance. Can I ask you, Anna, just to remind us about the postulates uh, from the first day of uh, our uh, Congress? These postulates served as the main goal for our uh, discussions. 
Now the first postulate after the first Congress of Dance was for the program of the Ministry of Culture and National Heritage to be uh, separated. Uh, this program is called Theater and Dance and we have uh, uh, we've made effort to actually separate uh, these disciplines uh, for dance to be treated as an independent field of art. I cannot share all the details with you, but I must say that we are quite pleased with the results of the negotiations. We are very uh, grateful to the Forum of uh, Dance that they also recommended uh, this idea and that uh, through this joint effort, uh, we've been successful. So, this was the first postulate of uh, the first Congress of Dance. When it uh, comes to the second postulate, space for dance, uh, infrastructure for dance, well, the existing infrastructure will be adapted to the needs of dancers and choreographers. We are aware of the fact that this shouldn't be the only program that exists. We would love to build new spaces, new infrastructure for dance, but it would be good if the current uh, drama theatres shared their repertoire, uh, their programmes uh, with us. It isn't easy because directors of such institutions are independent and no one can influence their artistic decision once they become directors. However, we do hope that this Spaces for Art a program will be the first program that will provide infrastructure and facilities for dance. And this program also means synergy uh, of independent uh, dancers uh, and that was actually the third postulate to actually solve this problem. Now the fourth postulate to improve the status of uh, ballet uh, managers and, and heads of ballet ensembles. As Yagoda said, uh, we uh, ballet ensembles at ballet uh, theatres, or dance ensembles actually, they are the last link. I'm not uh, the author of this, um, of this quote. Uh, I was just quoting a professional dancer. So we managed to uh, invite all the uh, ballet managers and uh, ballet theatre uh, directors uh, to a meeting and such a meeting took place in January in Radziejowice. So we sat at a table. Joanna, you were invited for that meeting too. Yes, but I believe this should be uh, a meeting with opera theatre directors and not um, just, just ballet uh, managers. Uh, I believe that this season we should change it. Yes, um, you know, new directors have been, um, sorry, new um, managers have been appointed. Uh, we regret that some of them uh, aren't there anymore, but, but we congratulate the new ones. Uh, so hopefully we will meet at this table again and uh, feel that we are all there together, that uh, we are playing in one team and that it's a uh, national um, phenomenon that we are dealing with. And now the Institute of Music and Dance uh, talks regularly to the directors. Uh, we have this uh, conference of theatre and um, opera uh, directors and we talk to them about the situation uh, of dance ensembles and ballets in their institutions. The year of dance, well here I'm directing my gaze at you, yes I'm very much moved by it, the, by this postulate. So charming and Hannah we were looking for a date 
when we could arrange that, what would be the prompt? How about this? Stefania Dobrowska, the first uh, uh, Polish uh, uh, dancer, the founder of the Polish contemporary dance. I suggested that possible. So we're looking for a year when to announce the year of dance so that will be well uh, uh, argumented for those who are choosing a patron uh, for uh, the year. So I, I'm trying to say that we have um, uh, as, as those some of the postulates uh, are being implemented as far as the second dance congress is concerned here we've seen quite a number of postulates uh, but um, what you have seen during these days on the screen those are the proposals that were was that were delivered to us by a large group of experts and consultants as far as the program of the congress is concerned this program was uh, being drafted by a group of 200 People. We started preparatory work for this Congress last year in October, uh, um, having had first consultations in small groups. And then uh, specific experts, uh, ex experts started work, their work, uh, preparatory work to this Congress. So we defined uh, the topics to be discussed and now we're facing the next uh, stage. So we would need to specify those uh, postulates who and what uh, will be supposed to, to do. So there is a lot of work to be done by us. So this is it at the very end. But if I may, with your permission, I would like to thank um, uh, some people because uh, for me um, those words of thanks are quite important. I would like to say them out loud. First and foremost, I would like to thank all those who have been involved uh, in the preparation of the substance of this uh, Congress, uh, Dance Congress. I would like to thank all the participants of uh, panel discussions. I would like to thank for moderation and uh, for being experts. So thank you ever so much for having accepted the an invitation to take part in this Dance Congress. I would like to thank the audience for taking part. You are the um, proof that it actually makes sense to organize Dance Congress, the second Dance Congress, and we had good intuition, although in time our intuition was not that right. I think we should meet more frequently. Director Meissner said yesterday that we should have the next uh, Congress the, as soon as possible. Our idea is to organize the next uh, third Cong Dance Congress in 2023. Thank you. And uh, I also would like to thank for the participation all those persons who are who have joined um, us uh, online. And there are so many of you out there in the virtual world. And yesterday I was completely moved that as many people are listening to us uh, due to simultaneous interpretation into the English language. And we will uh, check um, uh, what countries they have been with us, but uh, quite many people have been listening to the uh, simultaneous interpretation. So I would like to uh, thank our foreign participants as well and the organizers um, and, um, and many people who are invisible. Actually, this is the organizational team. Um, they are staff of the Institute of uh, Music and Dance and also all our partners, Just to be honest, the uh, team of the Department of Dance. There is a wonderful team of people very much involved and if you could please kindly thank all those who are working there in the back office invisibly. They've been working all, working all year round to have this Congress organized. So let us thank them. Uh, and also, we have a group of persons uh, who uh, joined us as volunteers. That is a group of 30 uh, volunteers. And thank you ever so much, dear volunteers. Uh, we uh, were recruiting volunteers a, a couple of weeks ago, and um, there was an avalanche of um, volunteers eager to work with us. And um, this is quite amazing. So thank you. Thank you, dear volunteers. I'm also pleased that the Alexandra Novatskovsky and Kacper Szklarski moderated the chat 
and those are the pieces of paper that you saw being delivered to us and they were dealt with by Alexandra and Kasper so thanks for uh, doing uh, this uh, moderation of the chat. Also, would like to thank uh, all those who were working on the statistics: Emilia Magdalena Yusvek, Alexander Machnik, and Eva Salva. And uh, also, would like to thank Magdalena Yusvek, who was uh, here yesterday. She was already mentioned, um, and a really long uh, holiday um, um, is uh, due to for her. I mean, she has deserved it. So, Magda, thanks you. Thanks a lot. I also would like to thank the member of the staff of the Office of Development of the Institute of Music and Dance and, and um, the promotional team, Agatha and Eva. You are great. The way they see us out there in downtown. Jacek yesterday uh, showed me some pictures with our huge billboard right in front of the rotunda in Warsaw. Guys, you are great. Promotion team rules. And uh, to, thanks uh, to all of you, uh, those of you who have been with us, who are those who are responsible for the web page, those who are interpreting from the Polish into the English language simultaneously. Thank you very much to uh, the company that uh, are also interpreting into the Polish sign language. So many thanks for the graphics to Marcin Wydyka. Uh, Marta Engerstein is responsible for photography. Marta is here together with Paulina, also Alexandra and Anna Maciejewska dealing with video materials and Wojtek Kaniewski. I would like to thank uh, for developing the web page uh, to Joanna Horoszewska and live streaming Contech 24. I have mentioned many people because this Congress is a big event and I do apologize if I omitted anyone. Nonetheless, I simply wanted to uh, say it expressly that I'm so grateful. And just one more small element, a very important element for me, and I need to rise. May I ask Magda? Magda, could you please help me? Ladies and gentlemen, history is Oh, history is such that we never start off the scratch. The second dance congress is the second one because it means that they use, there was a first one, the first one. And I would like to thank Jana Szymanka. I never had such a possibility in public to thank you. Just to thank you, Asha, for your involvement in the development of Polish dance. Thank you for preparing them with Marta Michalek and with your team, the first dance congress. And it was merely a congress of, of contemporary dance. So thank you very much for being uh, such a uh, determined director of the Department of Dance at the Institute of Music and Dance. We're here continuing your work. Uh, we're trying to develop what you have started. So ladies and gentlemen, may I give you this bouquet of flowers with love. I am surprised to see that uh, just simply love my job and um, Congress and whatever was happening at EMIT is such a large uh, team of people who were creating something new and um, it's good that um, it is still here and it's developing and doing fine and will be further developing I hope I also would like to say that uh, se seven years of work at the EMIT was a great time of working with great people and Ola undoubtedly is going to be a good time for you. So many thanks. I'm also happy to have uh, taken part at the Second Dance Congress. Thank you and on behalf of um, the experts and moderators uh, to thank Madam Director. Thank you. This is fantastic job, great job that unites our milieu. It's a fantastic organizational work. It's um, getting the targets right and talking about the pain points and so many declarations and so many promises. And we do believe that um, they will be implemented and we're here to support it. If you need us, just call us, be with us. 
Without you, we cannot do anything. Many thanks, Ola. You rule. Many thanks. Bravo. And uh, I would like to thank my uh, magnificent panelists, Agata Siewiek, Monika Myśliwiec, Joanna Szymańda, Anna Raszewska, Kursa, Ursula Lisotska, Professor Magorzata Lejko. Thank you very much. Super, wspaniale, dziękuję. Thank you, and we still have a surprise. I would like to invite Marta Eckenstein on the stage, because um, in the agenda you noticed uh, there is this additional element for the today. Um, and I think for us it would be the easiest that this part of the program is uh, watched from the audience side. So if I may kindly invite you to join the audience. And Marta, it is over to you. Hello. Now just uh, please bear with me. I need to connect with the technicians. And we're just about to see something that I've prepared for you. Now that's the web page. Can we see it? Could you please expand the view? Is this the maximum view? Okay, anyway. So that is the premiere of the web page www.polishdancephotography.art and as of now you can follow this web page on your telephones and on your computers this is where you can see my a little project of mine that i realized within the framework of the scholarship culture in the net, in the net on the net this is a gallery that presents the pictures of photographers from the previous 10 years and I just thought during the pandemic that it would be, if we cannot take pictures anymore, then how about um, doing something about the resources that are already out there, because we have the archives, and those archives uh, still uh, still need to be improved, and there are many discs. And I've been, uh, I've been a photographer, dance photographer for more than 10 years now. And sometimes the time comes when you think, Okay, so perhaps we should have a look at the old pictures and uh, remind you a couple of um, events. Um, and uh, from time to time I organize uh, events and exhibitions and um, I asked other photographers to join me on this project because we are a group of um, a dozen or so of dance photographers. And so here we have a team of eight photographers. Uh, so, um, we see uh, the names of photographers, Kalaudina, Maciej Rukasz, who else, Tomasz Ćwiertnia. Now, Katarzyna Machniewicz, of course. Mamy parytet zachowany, cztery kobiety, czterech mężczyzn, Pat Mitz. And we have quite a good um, gender parity, uh, parity, uh, uh, parity, and we have a colleague, a lady from Warsaw. She is new, and but she's great, and she is very passionate about dance photography. So we share with this pleasure. Okay, let us move on. So it's a very simple web page. All you need to do is click about photographers. There you go. You can read about uh, the bias of photographers and to see who you are dealing with. So first you may watch, uh, read about their output. And on this web page we have collected 800 pictures. So this is the largest dance photography exhibition that has ever been staged with a little cost. So at least in this form I hope it's going to be an attractive exhibition for you. So we can for instance enter a performance and we have seen some animated 
uh, pictures as well and we see who uh, directed it uh, the, and then there is a photography set and each uh, performance has 10 photographs selected by the photographers themselves and this digital exhibition didn't have a curator I simply invited the photographers uh, to join um, us in the project and everyone was sending their own proposals and the list of spectacles the key was such that I was asking uh, for having Polish productions only with the participation of Polish artists and uh, uh, staged um, in Poland, but not only by Polish choreographers, though, but with the participation of Polish dancers. So that was the key for the selection of uh, pictures. And yeah, I think it's the best of. Uh, so every photographer wanted to show the best he or she has in um, their archives. And I had a huge problem because, as I'm saying, I've been um, a photographing dance for many years, and dance is my field, main field of interest. Uh, and, uh, for instance, from the uh, Stena uh, Tainza Studio, STS, there I have hundreds of phot photographs taken there. So this is a very, very subjective selection. But what is interesting is that um, uh, there were some repeat uh, shows that, for instance, uh, I was suggesting photographers that uh, if uh, performances I repeated, that they cho choose something else. For instance, this is uh, the Święto Snów by Nizhinsky, uh, the Feast of Dreams. Uh, here we see in two different sets of photographs. And um, it is uh, presented on the photographs uh, taken by two d uh, in different photographers. And then we thought that actually this is interesting because it shows different perspectives of the same performance and uh, how photography is capable of uh, showing dance in, um, in different ways. So those are the pictures taken by uh, Kasia Machniewicz. So we may have a look. Right, so do have a look and uh, also wanted to say a few words about what we do and uh, to use this time that has been given to me. So what um, is um, the result of this selection of the best of pictures? The dance is seen not only in autonomous performances, but also in uh, other performances, in drama theater or in galleries. So because one, one should say that in, we are photographing in many different forms. Dance is present in many different forms. I don't know if I can actually capable of showing and talking at the same time. Um, I'm trying hard though. So Patnitz, for instance, is such a person. She works with the Modern Arts Center. And here is another example. Uh, that those are the pictures of a performance with the participation of uh, Polish artists. This web page was um, uh, uh, has just been done. Uh, the last changes were done last night. So if you see any glitches, just let me know, and uh, would then improve the operation of the page. Ah, yes, I didn't mention that those are um, the the key was for selection was that first this should be Polish artists. And the other key was that the last decade, although Jakob played a different game, because his archive is uh, larger than mine, because he has been taking pictures, dance pictures, more than me. And so he has some spectacles from before 2010. I don't know, have you got any wishes just to open up a gallery? Sonia says, um, uh, events. Yes, there are events. Okay, let's go to the events. Um, I've been uh, photographing 
um, in the Pracownia Fizyczna. I was working there for quite a number of times and in my set you will see some pictures taken at the Pracownia Fizyczna during the festival in 2012 and then 2018. So here we will see or maybe this way memories and this is STS Well, it's my dream to develop this page and for more and more photos to be uploaded so that it becomes a digital dance archive. But I believe this would require a slightly different approach. I believe that uh, still uh, the number of photographs that we have gathered here is quite sumptuous. I also wish to refer briefly to what I've already heard uh, during this Congress, namely how uh, the photographs um, have been selected. 70% of the photos sent by photographers um, come from uh, not big, spectacular uh, ballet productions or productions of big institutions. Very often uh, these are performances uh, made by independent uh, creators. Uh, we've had quite many solo performances here and we do like photographing more intimate performances and uh, we like entering this intimate relationship with the artist. So that's one thing I wanted to say. Another thing is that during the panel on uh, dance performances production I heard that, you know, there was this problem with the quality of photo doc documentation and video documentation of um, performances. I'd like to share my viewpoint here. I collaborate with drama theatres too, where there's a completely different approach to documenting uh, a performance. Uh, a photographer uh, accompanies uh, a performance also during rehearsals, then uh, he or she are invited to the dress rehearsal and uh, they have a lot of time to uh, take photos. Uh, the same concerns uh, teasers and, and uh, video recordings. There are people who do it professionally uh, and have wonderful uh, results. Unfortunately, uh, this doesn't concern dance and this is due to lack of funds, mainly. But also, very often photographs are taken during festivals, uh, very often Performance ask me to, uh, you know, give uh, a photograph uh, for free uh, so that it can be posted on a billboard. And well, uh, because they couldn't afford uh, a photographer earlier. And it's a difficult situation for me because I'd love to share uh, my output, but on the other hand, I'd love to. Uh, you know, have situations where I'm there while uh, the performance is being created, meet uh, the dancers and not be there only once uh, during this final performance when there's audience too and, you know, then the situation is even more difficult. Uh, well, some of my colleagues, um, for example, Jakob, uh, he was 
more present, uh, for example, at this Stary Brovar uh, venue, and he uh, would be allowed to be there during re rehearsals. I usually work during festivals and I like that too. However, I'd love to be able to uh, be let uh, to dress rehearsals, for example. Okay, my time is over, right? Well, Magda, I'd like to thank you very much for what you do. You have a great talent here, great talent for uh, photographing Polish dances. Marta, you're present there at different events and it's not only you but also the whole group of photographers. So thank you very much for all your work and thank you very much for this website because it shows, uh, you know, um, this great quality of uh, your uh, photographs. These are really world-class uh, photographs. It also shows the scope of uh, activity of Polish dancers. Now, we will have three performances, Sztuczne Ciało, at 6 p.m. of Mr. Rodowski, uh, then at 7 p.m. Uh, another show by Mr. Grodowski and then by David Żakowski. Uh, the third performance. Now the organizer of the second Congress of Dance is the Institute of Music and Dance co-financed by the um, capital city of Warsaw. Our partner was the um, Institute of uh, Culture and uh, Heritage of Polish um, of Polish countryside our media partners were taniecpolska.pl, uh, Polish Radio Channel 4, E-Teatr, Radio dla Ciebie, Wolna Kultura and Teatralia and the honorary patronage uh, was given to us by the Ministry of Culture and National Heritage. Thank you very much. Thank you.